So, um, John Barnhill, you can see him next to me now, um, Assistant Vice President for Advancement at Alien University, his alma mater. Um, I'm very pleased to bring him here today. He's got a great record with Giving Days, um, five years as you mentioned before, a total raised of $2.85 million um, from 11,764 donations, which is really incredible. I first spoke to John about 18 months ago. I loved hearing his thoughts on fundraising and how to make Giving Days work, and I thought I've got to share his advice and knowledge with the sector. So I've done events with John, I've asked him to do webinars, and now this is, our, I mentioned, our first Q&A. So you guys are the lucky ones, the lucky 10. Um, that in mind, after the call, please be mindful of John's time. We've had a ton of people asking for extra phone calls, extra emails. We're going to try and put on more sessions, um, but we can't, we can't give up all of John's time, and I've had to decline a lot of those. So just bearing that in mind. With that, I'm going to pass over to you, John. Um, away you go. Uh, thanks, Duncan. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with you, too, and Hubbub uh, for coordinating this um, uh, today. So what I thought I'd do is just give you guys a two-minute overview of uh, Elon Day. Uh, we've, um, we've had five years of this. Uh, this is the fifth year that we're coming into, and we started planning already for, uh, for this year's uh, March 13th is the date that we're going to be doing our fifth Elon Day. We've learned a lot of lessons from the beginning uh, that we do. We, we basically got into this work because we wanted to increase alumni participation. And what we found is it was really just a great way to engage the entire university, um, the entire family uh, of the university in uh, being involved in, in giving. Uh, and it started from small uh, beginnings. Uh, you can see on the, on the screen right now the slide from the first year. Uh, we, we did back in 2017, I mean, uh, sorry, 2014, and, uh, and we had 1,000 donors and about $116,000. Uh, it went from there, uh, if we look at the next year, uh, we do these little infographics as a way to, um, to thank. So, Duncan, you can maybe advance that uh, slide for me. Um, the next year, in 2015, uh, we had uh, 2,703 gifts uh, and raised about $702,000. Uh, and then the next year, um, and, and I don't know if you noticed this, but we, we try to track the, the number of um, gifts that we got under $50 or the number of events that we had on campus. Um, and so uh, in, this, in that year, uh, we had 3,400. Uh, sorry, 3,749 gifts and raised just under a million dollars. You better believe everybody on our team was like, why couldn't we cross a million dollars? So uh, the following year, uh, this past year, um, we had a, another successful Elon Day, uh, and we did cross that threshold, um, that million dollar threshold, and we had 4,299 gifts. Um, and you can see on there that 62% of those gifts came from alumni, and 20% uh, came from uh, parents. We had other constituents that made up the difference um, that, that made up the total, but this is a day that um, we have really counted on. And then many of our young alums even say, I'm just waiting for Elon Day. Uh, so that's the brief overview of where we are. Um, I know that each of you come to uh, Giving Days with different experiences, so um, I'm ready for all types of questions and uh, probably a good way to get in. So I guess you got to raise your hand electronically or, um, or submit your questions online and we'll, we'll dive into it. Yeah, so I'll just, uh, thank you John, I'll just repeat that. So on your control panel at the bottom there is a chat uh, box where you can write your questions if you'd like to. Alternatively, um, you can put up your hand on your control panel. So what I'd like to suggest, um, what I do, I've, I've got a list of all, of all of you as your institutions and how many giving days you've run. And so uh, we've, got a, we've got a couple of universities here who haven't run their first giving day yet. So I'd like to almost say, would, would, um, would UMBC or Boys State University be interested in asking their question first? Um, that would be great if you could. Um, and then we've got a few universities who have run one before uh, in Menlo College, MSOE, and uh, Western New England. Um, so if you'd like to think about your questions now and start asking, that would be really great. For those of you that don't know me, I'm somewhat of a filibusterer, so I can talk for the full hour, but I'd rather we get right into your questions. Um, but if there's a lull, I can I kind of tell you some stories if you want. Well, let's see. So, 
Uh, there's no question coming in yet. When you do put your hand up, what I'll do is unmute you and let you ask your question. Um, but perhaps, John, I mean, one thing that's come up for us many times before and being asked is, is how you structure your team yeah. in order to start planning a successful day and what that looks like. Yeah, so, so everybody's campus is different, and I, and I recognize that. But what, one of the things we tried to do right away was, um, it, for some parts of the campus, it's kind of an odd concept, a giving day. Uh, there's been enough of them around uh, the nation and the world that people are kind of a little bit used to it, so they might have experienced it with their um, K-12 through schools or um, their other nonprofits they're involved in. So now there's a little bit more of a groundswell, I think, if you wanted to tap different departments to be a part of it. But what I would recommend is you think about all of the different places on your campus that you're going to be um, working with collaboratively. Uh, and, and at Elon, we, we tend to um, make the mistake, I'll say, of doing everything collaboratively. And so that slows some things down, I'll be honest with you. It, it takes longer to work with people, but the outcome is so much better. So when we first started our, our Elon day, we didn't just say this is an advancement office or a development office function. Uh, we said this is a university thing and what we want to do is help lead that and so we worked with our university communications sometimes those departments are within advancement anyway but university communications our technology office uh, most people do not cross that bridge to go over to the technology uh, side but we really needed them as a partner um, and then the different units across the campus whether it's if you've got schools or colleges um, deans uh, faculty members, um, we involved students uh, in the process. And, and so if you just think about that, and, and of course, uh, because Elon's president is such a dynamic uh, individual, we, we wanted to have Leo Lambert involved too. And so uh, we just kind of started tapping the different offices that we would want to be involved in this process. And that created the team, the core team of how we would approach the work. Of course, the majority of those people were the parent engagement office, the alumni office, the annual giving office, you know, those kinds of people. And so now we have probably a team of 50 that are working on this, uh, a core team of about 10 uh, that are involved in this year. But, you know, you've got somebody doing the website and you've got somebody doing the uh, behind the scenes gift processing and you've got some, you know, so you all have a, a larger team, even though you don't think they're going to all sit down with you at the table uh, every week. Um, so that's kind of how we structured it and, uh, and we found real success in it. Great. Thank you, John. Now, I have had some um, questions filter through here, so, um, and I can see that they were entered on the questions pane rather than the chat pane, which is actually the right thing to do. So um, thank you to Leona and Deirdre so far. So I think that uh, Leona Powell at UMBC has asked, how do you structure your planning team, which I, you may have covered, John, or, or is there something different with, a, with the actual core team? Uh, I think that the... The, the best thing I did and the worst thing I did was um, I just decided who the lead person was going to be and they became the coordinator. They, you know, they didn't necessarily do it, um, but they worked with the people that were going to pull off the details with it all. Um, it happened to be me, um, less because of me and more because of my role. Uh, because I work with all the different departments, it just made sense that I could convene them uh, easily. In some cases, it might be somebody in uh, the development office directly. Um, or uh, I think that when it's uh, a pure person that's only interested in fundraising, people have trouble seeing the bigger picture of it. And so I recommend that whoever the coordinator is, it's somebody that carries enough, um, quote unquote, authority to be able to pull a, a broader team together across the campus. Um, it does not have to be your vice president. Uh, it does not have to be the president, uh, but it does have to be somebody that has the, um, the, the clout of sorts, and partly because I've worked at Elon for uh, 21 years, I, I knew a lot of the people that could pull them together. Uh, so uh, you structure your core team as the people you're going to talk to on almost a weekly basis uh, going up to it, and your bigger team is being more like a month, and we structured it into subcommittees, uh, a communication subcommittee, a volunteer subcommittee, kind of the peer-to-peer -peer outreach that we would be doing, a technology and um, web um, subcommittee. Uh, we have a, um, uh, a technology subcommittee that is dealing with um, the behind the scenes stuff and a technology scene that's dealing with the in front of scenes. So that's the web and the, and the technology uh, behind it. And those are pretty much your core teams of who it is. And then you have the different constituents, parents, alumni, students, 
Um, and then we have uh, 38 chapters and clubs. So we had the, the alumni uh, chapter team and the events uh, all work together uh, collaboratively. Great. Um, so I tell you what, um, I haven't seen any hands go up yet. Does that mean you're, you're either really respectful or... No one knows how to raise their hand. That's what's going on. It, it, it could be that, or it could be, uh, it could be just slight nerves, but maybe someone will soon. But I do have more questions. And there's one related here from Deirdre Swords at uh, Western New England University, um, which is, and I think it's related, it's how do you engage your School of Law alumni hmm. in your Elon Day event? Yeah, so Elon Law, uh, our main campus is headquartered in uh, Elon, North Carolina. It's that small, but it's also kind of in the city of Burlington. Uh, right nearby. And 30 minutes away, uh, 25 minutes away, is Elon Law. It's in Greensboro, uh, kind of a more of a city environment closer to uh, Supreme Court justices and those kinds of things. And so what, what we tried to do is um, take that as almost like its own entity. And a lot of our branding and marketing, instead of just saying Elon University, would say Elon University, Elon Law. And so they would literally have uh, marketing materials that just took the brand of Elon Law and did that. But everything we were doing on the main campus was something they could take advantage of. So it was really the sub-brand uh, that they took advantage of. And we didn't do that with all the schools. We did it with our athletics outreach and with our law outreach and then just all alumni uh, in general. And then they did some very specific things because they have their own team of people uh, where they did events around it that were different. We, we have a very distinctive thing called college coffee uh, at Elon, and it's about um, 9.30 to 10 o'clock in the morning every Tuesday of the academic year where the entire community can come together and have coffee and chat, and it's just a community time uh, in, that we do that. And what we... Um, what we did was we took advantage of that time as a time to announce some major gifts or some matches. Well, the law school didn't use, doesn't do college coffee in Greensboro, and so they did something in the afternoon when they typically have a little bit of a lull. Um, so we were specialized within the law school to make it work for them, uh, but then they also took advantage of the full breadth of what we were doing. Terrific. So um, just before I move on to the next question, I'd like to this is a wonderful system. It's lining up the questions for me wonderfully, and I can uh, and I can see them in advance and come to them. So, I did say uh, we'd go through them in order. But if you do have any questions, um, this is open to everyone now. Please do. If you want to write them, please do send them in or, or put your hand up, uh, and we'll pick them up. Um, great. Okay, John. So you just mentioned announcing your matching gifts. One question that I have here is. How did you identify uh, your first year's matching and challenge gift donors? So in the first year, we didn't do it. But I would recommend to anyone that's starting this, do that. Uh, as we've evolved, we've gotten um, smarter, maybe, uh, in how we pull this off. But uh, in the first year, uh, we really just rolled it out as more of a, um, a social media uh, campaign. and. Uh, the appetite on campus, this is uh, good for everyone to hear, the appetite on campus was not to have this be a giving day. It was just a day of pride. And and I was saying, no, it's a giving day, you know, and so um, uh, if, if you go back to actually the first slide, we, we used this, um, this idea that uh, we wanted everyone to wear their gear. Um, that's not me. That's, Elon is not a crime-ridden area. No, um, those are sirens going by, Duncan. Oh, sorry. Um, so in the in the first year, we said um, wear your gear, spread the word, make a gift, and so those were the three things we asked everyone to do. Well, we asked everybody to do those same things each year after that, but we didn't market it that way. It was more about a day of giving. And, and less about wearing your gear and spreading the word. Because in that first year, you can see we had a lot of people, thousands of people, sharing uh, their pictures of them wearing shirts in front of the Eiffel Tower and in Costa Rica and with their families wherever they are in the world. But the giving was not following that. And so the matching gifts were the way that we kind of spurred that uh, excitement. And the way that I would go about it is I would work with your major gift staff or anybody that does development on your area and look at people that are already thinking about making a gift that would enjoy having their name associated with Elon in a more public way. And so uh, the Duncan gift uh, from, the, 
from Duncan uh, would be the best first gift to have. And so the Duncan gift, if we hit this threshold, 500 donors by 10 a.m. or 100 donors by noon, Duncan will contribute $25,000. Well, Duncan was already thinking about making a $25,000 gift. This helps, one, put him over the edge, and two, give him some recognition for it. Uh, one of the big things about gifts are, do the dollars follow the dollars? So if 500 people give to all different funds on campus, does Duncan's money match wherever those funds go? Or is Duncan's money to athletics, and it doesn't match directly, but we converted that. You unlocked that gift for the campus. Those are nuances you want to figure out. And typically, the donor wants to be involved in those concepts. But it could be that you just say, this is what we're proposing to, to you. And because Duncan loves Elon so much, which we know he does, uh, he wants to be a part of that uh, effort. Right. So um, I'm picking out the questions so they kind of flow well here. And I've got a great one, which is, is how you set your first year goal. But it would be great, John, if you'd take that. And I, I imagine how you collect what match funding you had in the second year affected how you set goals for that year. So if you could yeah. just talk about, about that. Yeah, so the thing I would not do, and everyone disagrees with me in the world about this until it works, um, is don't set your goal. Uh, I never set the Elon Day goal until about 2.30 that day of Elon Day. Um, I have a sense for what we're going to get, but you never know. And so typically by about 2.30, you want to say, and I'm, I'm saying that time worked for us, that's a, a lull in the afternoon. People are back to work. Uh, they might have been active at noon, uh, but, but that's a lull in the day. And if you set a lofty goal at that point, you're much more educated about where you currently are and where you're going to go. And if you use midday challenges, uh, we typically do about four key times of the day. So leading into the day, 10 a.m., you might do a noon, um, a three or four o'clock, and then you do you keep hitting goals until midnight, and you know midnight is what we do. We have a lot of our alums live on the west coast now, which is a different time zone, um, which creates some problems. You know, you're marketing to them by midnight, you know, and they're like, that's you know like nine o'clock for us. Why would we do you know? And so, however the case may be, you've got to make sure your time zones match where you are making your challenges, and if your alums are all over the place or they're maybe just in one city. Great. So I imagine, John, that setting your goal is, you know, it, you'll, have an, you'll have a thought about it many months before, though. Yeah. So a question I've got is, um, how long did you start planning? Uh, in the first year, it was probably only about three months in advance. Um, immediately after the success of the first year, uh, it became a planning for the next year, but we really probably didn't kick it off until mid-fall. We are always in the spring uh, for it. And then it really ramped up around um, uh, after the calendar year end. So I would say the 1st of January for a mid-March launch. Right now, since we're in our fifth year, we started planning in, um, uh, in June. So May 31st is the end of our fiscal year. And we started planning literally the next day. Uh, if, you, if you were really serious about this, you're already debriefing your, your day during your day. So we had already had a bunch of notes about what we wanted to change and what we wanted to look at. And so it's pretty much now, in our fifth year, a 12-month um, uh, process. Uh, but, but you do them in waves, because all your other work still has to happen. You just want to be working on what are the big tweaks we want to make. I want to have all of our matching gifts locked in by the end of December this year. Last year, I locked those in the day before we launched our Elon Day. Not the best time <laughs> to be launching uh, your, your matches, but people respond to a deadline, and that's what, what we had. Right. So uh, Duncan, I... one, one last thing. that When we were talking about setting goals, I forgot to say, you'd obviously set goals differently if you have a $100,000 match or if you have a $10,000 match. Uh, you. You know, if you have a hundred thousand dollar match, you better be passing that goal. You know, and so it just depends on what your matches are. And then most development shops kind of have a guess for how many they'll get. Always shoot low and go past it. Do not put a lofty goal. There's a few schools out there that went with lofty goals, thinking that they hit it and they didn't hit it. And it's pretty public. Um, it's very hard to go back from that. Uh, and so 
everyone always wants me to stretch well beyond our goal, and we do every year, and it terrifies us. We're literally pulling our hair out at, uh, hair out at midnight uh, trying to hit those goals. Great. So this is going to be my little challenge in the middle of our uh, Q&A session, is that the first person to put their hand up to ask a question, I will jump to the front of the queue. Wow. Right. Um, but let me keep going. So. Uh, a question here from uh, Rosetta Clay of Menlo College, uh, which um, is related to the date, so we're thinking how long we plan, but when are we yeah. actually going to do it? So uh, two parts to the question, John, is do you participate in, in uh, the National Giving Day, Giving Tuesday in November, um, or have you, I guess, uh, and how do you determine the Elon Day date? Is it the founding date of the college? Uh, great question. Uh, yes, uh, it is the founding date of the college, but it now moves um, because we always do them on a Tuesday for that college coffee that I mentioned earlier. And so it's not literally on the day, but it's part of it. We, we used to do something called Founders Day. And it was a successful day on campus. We brought about 100 people together. It was nice. We honored some donors, planted a tree, you know, those kinds of things. And when Elon Day took off after the first year, uh, the president actually said, I think we need to make Founders Day Elon Day. And so Founders Day just doesn't really even get mentioned anymore. But that's when we show the most pride in the university. We get the most gifts in our history on that day. And, um, and we process more gifts in our office in that one day than we do in our best in our best months of both May and December. If you just think about that, it's uh, you've got to have your operations really in line. Um, we picked March also because it's a downtime. It's a time where we always had a little bit of a lull in our fundraising efforts, um, and so it, it gave us a big charge right there in the middle, and it made sense uh, for our planning cycle. If you do it at the very beginning of the fall. Uh, it's a little bit harder because you're trying so hard to hit your year-end goals that, um, that for us that's been problematic. We'd rather get toward the end but not so close to the end that you don't have any cleanup time. You know, so we've got this wave of time after uh, March that we can, you know, April and May, we can really push it. Uh, for people that have fiscal years that are, um, later, like end of June, you might push yours a little bit later too. So I'm just going to ask um, one final question on, on timeline, and this is a question from Ruth Royal at Elms College. Um, so we've, we've talked about uh, the timeline. Do you split that timeline up into, into different things? Um, I'm actually I'm, I'm paraphrasing really here, but just a bit more information on, on what you do in the different stages leading up to the day. Maybe. Yeah, I think that um, uh, go from your your go live date, uh, your, your giving day, and just move backwards. Um, if you're going to mail something to all of your constituents saying, save the date, you got to think, okay, when do I need to send that to them? At least a month in advance, right? So then when do you need to design that? Um, you need to design that probably three weeks before that um, to have it printed and mailed and all those things and done. So then you have to pick your theme. Well, when do you pick your thing? Well, probably about three weeks before that. You know, so just by thinking about all the things you want to do on your day, if you're going to have um, 200 volunteers uh, activated uh, and and be uh, like what we do is we have um, Elon Day uh, champions. We call them a different name than any of our other names so that they know it's special. But you can have somebody that's already on your board be an Elon Day champion. Uh, you can have somebody that's brand new, never been involved at all, be an Elon Day champion. So it's kind of this one day of, I'm going to be a part of this big thing. And if you're going to recruit them, when do you need to do that? You probably need to do that a couple months in advance and then have a window where you're really recruiting them hard. So just taking it from the day of and moving backwards. And that's how we really work in our segments. Our technology for our website, we're working on that now for March. There's tweaks and enhancements that we want to make. We, we want to try to use um, social media in a more purposeful way from our volunteers so that they can post things and, and be out there um, uh, engaging more alumni. So that's tweaks we want to make now, then. We won't launch that until a month before, but we're trying to get further ahead of it. Uh, I, I hope that answered that um, better. Oh, great, thank you. Um, so I've got a, a question here. Um, which is, which is related to generating activity. Now, you mentioned ambassadors. Um, so there's a, a very kind question here with some background from Meredith Levine from uh, Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. Um, 
So here's the question in full. So what do you recommend to generate interest and appetite in giving days? Um, over the last three giving days, they've had low interest. That's even with a comprehensive social video and online campaign and the table on the main campus. Um, there's three campuses. This year we moved to a segmented giving strategy where a dean or program manager represents a school or program. So any recommendations about generating more appetite, um, perhaps given, given a bit of that background? Yeah, uh, every school is different. Um, and so uh, we were really appealing to our uh, alumni base. Um, one of the things interesting about Elon is that it's, uh, it's grown exponentially over the last um, 20 years. And so what used to be a small college in the south of North, uh, in North Carolina and the south of the United States is now a comprehensive university that's more nationally known. 65% of our alumni are under 40. So with a young, young population like that, and, and even a larger percentage within that is younger than 30. So just our class sizes have exploded in the last uh, 15, 20 years. And so they are much more likely to be on social media than a traditional um, college or university that's graduated 400 people every year for the last 20 years. You know, and we've just gone like this. And so we, we knew we had to do it in a much more uh, social media um, visual way. Uh, and so a, a lot of our success, I think, is, is based on that. I think uh, trying to be creative, um, I think one of my best recommendations, instead of thinking hierarchical um, about tapping deans or department chairs across the campus, I would think about um, alumni and get them to use their peer networks. And so um, there's typically cohorts in, in any kind of uh, system. So whether it's a class cohort or a, um, a fraternity or sorority, probably less likely for a, a school of pharmacy. But um, so what are the cohorts that exist that you can tap into? And then in some schools, we don't do this, but some schools create competitions so that if you want to unlock this gift for your club or program or school, you've got to hit this threshold. So if we get 20 donors that are from this cohort, it'll unlock $10,000 for your school or program. And people visually want to see that ticker. One of the best things we ever did is we created a, a combined ticker. So people literally were watching that number. And I'd say probably at the end, we, we got close to a thousand gifts within the last couple of hours because of the ticker, more than what else we were doing. People wanted to see the number go out and unlock uh, a major gift um, in, our, in our world. Uh, but it could be for anything. You know, it could be recognition, it could be a trophy, it could be you know, some other kind of way. Right, so we mentioned your demographics of your, of your alumni base there, John. Did, did you track or notice, uh, this is a question from Gloria Spanner at uh, Boys State, did you, did you notice which generations tended to give more or made bigger gifts on the day? Um, the, the majority of our gifts are under $50. Um, we try to encourage everyone that makes a gift to at least give their class year. And so if you think about it, somebody that graduated in 2014, they'd give $20.14, or I guess $2,014, but most of the time it's that kind of participation gift. Again, our goal was not money. I know this sounds crazy to most people, but our goal was participation. We want the most alumni engaged. We're trying to train them to give back to the university. And so if you make your messaging be about give your stretch gift, make sure it's a major gift, uh, it's probably not the best thing for a, a giving day. The better thing for a giving day is we want everyone involved. Everyone should send in their pictures. Everyone should make a gift. Um, everyone should be spreading the word on social media. That kind of all-in uh, men mentality, I think, is the way to go for a giving day. Um, did, did that answer that question, though, Duncan? Felt like yeah. there was two, two parts to it. No, no, that was great. That okay. was great. I mean, and, and you mentioned um, you know, your goal was participation. Now, we've had a lot of success where we've seen universities who may be a bit nervous to set a, a fundraising goal, a funding goal, but to right. actually set right. just a participation goal. Have, have yeah. you considered that? Yeah, again, I don't want to set a goal until I have a better sense of what's going on during the day, which is around 2.30 for us. Um, uh, yeah. 2.30 to 3.30, we're really making those final decisions and, and uh, getting our last push out there.
Yeah. Um, okay. You could. I we raised in this past year. Uh, 23% of our alumni gave back to the university over the year. On Elon Day, we got six percentage points of that 23 on that one day. So all of our other fundraisers throughout the year got six percentage points on one day. Um, that's pretty remarkable. That doesn't represent all the, all the parents that gave and all the friends that gave and all the alums that gave again. It represents brand new donors in this fiscal year that we added. Um, I think the way you get that kind of percentage increase is you create a lot of enthusiasm around that day. And I wouldn't want to do anything to not uh, hit our goal. And so I'd rather just create a buzz. Um, and that's what we tried to do. You, you can see on one of these charts, we, we keep finding, I, I had a friend uh, in Boston, you know, I'm down here in North Carolina, but I had a friend in Boston say, Hey, the Twitter feed on my computer says that a top tending tro uh, topic is Elon Day. What's that about? Well, if you're a top trending topic uh, above Beyonce, you know, that's a pretty good deal for, for your university. And so we did that through social media. Great. No okay. offense to Beyonce fans. <laughs> Okay, so um, I've got you've just mentioned parents there. I think I've got two questions here, John. So a hot topic, um, which both basically say, you know, what, you know, well done, and and how did you market to them or specifically target them um, to get to get participation amongst parents? Yeah, well, again, we we look at Elon as a big family, um, and so uh, alumni are of course a, a big part of that family. Students are a big part of that family, but parents are part of that family. And uh, we have a, also a remarkable thing that happens here at Elon, where because our alumni base is so um, young, we look to our parents even more now uh, to be philanthropic back to the university. And a good number, because we're a private institution, a good number of our parents are kind of familiar with philanthropy um, uh, through their private schools or other experiences that they've had with nonprofits and, and such. And maybe every university has that, but we, we've really been able to tap into it. So they're used to that. But what we did is we tried to encourage them to send in photos of their student or them at family weekend with Elon shirt. There's, there's a great pride that's developed in Elon uh, from parents. And so they were the ones with the baseball cap. And you wouldn't believe the number of pets. People took pictures of their pets wearing Elon shirts and sent them into Elon Day because their kids are off at college. And so they wanted to be a part of the day. Um, and so they made gifts. Uh, and we, we saw a pretty exponential increase in parent giving this past year because we really stepped up the marketing uh, to it. Uh, a, a big question uh, and debate that we have around our leadership table uh, for Elon Day is how many times during the day do you ask people to give? And, and I look at that as um, there's soft ways to ask, kind of peer-to-peer, -peer, um, social media, those kinds of things. But an email, you're literally targeting an email to a person saying, please be a part of Elon Day. And my feeling of this, and we actually had uh, analytics, uh, this is so fun, to watch on the screen we literally have this, uh, we call it a success room. Uh, you know, most people are familiar with the war room idea, but we wanted a success room. So we set up this conference room. We've got video monitors all around, whiteboards and, and flip charts. And you could literally send an email to 30,000 people, our alumni base, and watch the ticker go up. When we didn't send emails, you wouldn't believe what happened. The ticker didn't move. So. If you just think about it, the more you ask, the more likely it is you're going to uh, receive a gift. If you don't ask, you're probably not going to receive a gift. And so the debate in our office is when is too much. Uh, we do get um, some people that are like, leave me alone. You know, you're for crying out loud, you're a trending topic in the nation. Just stop already. And, uh, and those people we take out of the pool for that day um, and then approach them later. Okay, great. Um, so be brave, basically, with comms on the day. Yeah, yeah. You, if you want to be passive, you're going to get that result. Uh, if you want to be, um, if you want to create a buzz and, and remind everybody, uh, I, I look at it very differently than um, some people. But people want to participate in this day. They just forget. They get busy. They have other things on their plate. And so we, um, after the first year, we we got really smart and made a um, a mobile friendly app that people could give through. 
we didn't have that the first time we did. And so we just thought that would be a really thing. It, it didn't have all the usability that we wanted it to in the third year it did. You know, so we've made tweaks every year um, with all of our uh, different partners uh, we did. Right, okay, so um, there's some questions here that have been here for a while now, but there, and I've finally got to them. Um, so sorry for taking my time, but this is a, a question from Angela Bartosik at Marquette University. So we mentioned parents, but how do you get your staff and faculty involved? Um, do you, I mean, do you, do you try and meet and communicate with, with every college and department individually? Uh, we don't. Uh, I, I think we will eventually get to that point. What, what was interesting is we created uh, such a buzz on the first year. And because of that college coffee, that kind of community-wide thing, and we over-communicate. And it's part of the strategy of our Elon Day. And so it's hard for people on campus not to know that Elon Day is that day, and everyone should wear their maroon and gold. Those are our colors. Everyone should participate in this special college coffee. There's going to be announcements. We send out these infographics to everybody afterwards. Oh my gosh, you raised a million dollars yesterday. That's really good to know. But the biggest difference for us, um, and every school is going to approach this differently, is we encouraged people to give to the things they cared most about. And so after Elon Day, every department that received gifts received an email that said, oh, by the way, you, you had um, $20,322 in gifts yesterday. Congratulations. What? That's designated giving to different programs and departments across the campus. That makes a difference. Uh, people then are like, I love this Elon Day thing. And so what we tried to do is use those relationships that faculty and staff have to reach out. But probably the way that they've been the most active is departments will wear their maroon and gold, go stand out in front of their building or their office or with some students, and they'll take pictures and they'll submit those on Elon Day. 76% um, uh, of our faculty and staff give back to Elon annually and a good number wait till Elon Day to be a part of that. Great. Um, so, here's a question I'm going to ask. So, someone's asked about, about what type of events you run on the Giving Day. Now, I know that you run a lot. So, if you could break it down for on campus and then around the world, I think that'd be really helpful. Okay. So, in, in the first year, we said, okay, we're going to do college coffee. That's that, it's already existing. We didn't have to pay anything because that's already a, an event that happens. It's already budgeted to have coffee and things. All we did was say, instead, can we have a cake that says Elon Day? And, uh, and then when the president's making an announcement or I'm making an announcement, we can say, and, and have this great cake that's going on. One year when we did it, there was a new graphic identity and they wanted to get out hats to all of the um, faculty, staff, and students. So they had those printed. It looked like it was an Elon Day thing. It wasn't. It was already something that they were going to do anyway. So we took advantage of existing events, um, and this community event is the time that we do it every year. And so we just take advantage of what's going on that day. So that event happens, uh, and then um, the other on-campus event is that night. Uh, the students plan uh, two things. Uh, one is a donor reception. So for all the seniors, we only do a senior class giving campaign. We don't do every year of student giving. But every uh, senior is invited to a special reception uh, with the president some years to be recognized for being a donor. So they feel like, wow, and they get all dressed up and they go to this Elon Day donor reception. And then later, after that reception ends, it's an all-campus uh, party for the students. It's not a big um, alcohol thing. It's just more of a pride night. They have photo booths and um, maybe a band or something like that. And, and it's on a Tuesday night, so people aren't out crazy late. But we take over the whole student center, and that's the student party. They don't get what Elon Day is as much as our alumni and our parents and our friends do because they're not really part of the giving. But what we try to do across the campus throughout the day is show them the impact of philanthropy. So the one year we did, um, like, a bow on different buildings with a little sign, a ticket that said, this was made possible because donors gave to them. Uh, or they'll see a piece of equipment in a classroom and they'll say, this was made possible because somebody gave a gift. to them. So we tried to do this kind of impact of philanthropy on that day as well. And then the day after Elon Day, a couple of years, we did a campaign called A Thousand Thanks where students would come by and write thank you notes for the gifts that had come in through Elon Day. And that was a way to kind of build in the stewardship of things. 
The off-campus events, uh, we really lean on our campus chapters, um, which exist uh, in 38 uh, cities around the world, and um, one in London. And the uh, it's a great place. I'm not dumping it here. No, just um, and so they are already hosting events in their regions. We just say, this is Elon Day. It's a great day for you to just make that be one of your days. And they've got the ticker up on a big screen in a sports bar or something like that, or it's a, if it's a smaller city, they might have it in someone's home or a, um, a, a banquet room. And basically, they just have a party uh, and celebrate Elon and make connections and, and use the network, but they're watching the ticker. And we try to encourage everybody is through those chapters and clubs to make gifts as well. Great. Those, are the, those are the big events. Well, thanks. So that, when you're running events all around the world, obviously comms becomes a challenge. I have a, a great question here from Leanna Powell at UMBC, which is, um, you mentioned that you make decisions throughout the day. Um, so, so she asked you to set up an operation center. That was before your question. You said you have a war room. <laughs> yeah, it's a success room, Duncan. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we're, yeah, we attacked a lot more people in the Middle Ages. That's the <laughs> um, but how do you organize and communicate with your team throughout the day? Because I'm sure not everyone can fit in that room at the same time. Right, so that, that core leadership team is, is basically made up of subcommittees, and each of the subcommittees has different responsibilities. So there's an events team I mentioned before, a volunteer management team, communications team. And so the events team will say, hey, we need these communications to go to our, our leads uh, that are out there. And so the, the staff member that's responsible for our, our chapters, they're sitting in, in the communications uh, committee saying, hey, we need all these messages to go out. We printed these uh, great banners. Uh, you know, every chapter probably has this, but we thought we were brilliant. Uh, we, we created these banners that said Elon Day and then the name of the city. And we sent those out two weeks in advance. And so all the chapters took these pictures of Elon Day signs, and it just was a great way to show the pride. Um, and uh, and now we're we're debating: Do we need to redo those every year? And so, but because we do different branding, uh, different marketing, uh, kind of look and feel for Elon Day, uh, we we've changed them every year uh, since then. It's probably not the best cost-effective way to do it, but it, it creates a brand and an identity. Um, so the subcommittees really are the way that we um, create the infrastructure to be able to manage such a, a broad-based um, effort. And you know, if the chapter staff member has 38 chapters that they're communicating with, that's the best way to communicate, not from some other office. So what we try to do is funnel through the systems. Um, our athletic teams are a great way to do this. We, we use the coaches. The coaches want to be a part of sending out the word of giving back to the different um, uh, uh, athletic programs. We don't send those messages, but we help them send the messages. Uh, we help them with, here's the branding, here's some of the common language, and then they can send them out from their personal emails, and that's way more successful. It takes a lot of infrastructure and a lot of communication in advance, but um, we've built a, a good system now. Uh, and every year we tweak it. You know, Every year we try to make it a little bit better and easier. Um, on our website, we, we create these graphic um, uh, identities and language that people can just steal from. Uh, and so the year that we have um, the We Are Elon symbol uh, was our marketing. People could go on there and grab that uh, picture and put it on their Facebook page. So we create headers and banners and, and, um, and uh, sample uh, tweets, um, or as my mother says, the Twitter. And uh, so uh, that's how we go about it. Great, so you mentioned the social media and the Twitter there, of course, and, and sending emails, even personal ones. Um, do you use any other strategies? For example, direct mail, uh, telephone campaign on the day, anything, anything other than online, basically? Uh, yes. Uh, basically, use all your resources. Uh, if you've got a phone-a-thon program, definitely. Uh, we, we have them going the entire day, actually. Um, to targeted people um, to make it successful. Uh, they don't have as much success, uh, and, and I think everybody knows this, it's harder and harder for especially young alums to get their cell phone numbers. Once you get that, it's, it's pretty easy, but landlines are just not something people are doing anymore uh, for young alums. So Phonathon struggles a little bit with that, but when they um, personally reach out to people, instant messenger uh, works uh, pretty well, or um, you know, messenger through uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook is something that we've found is, is pretty successful. Um, Instagram posts, uh, 
Uh, some some want us to go Snapchat. We haven't done it yet. Um, there is a Snapchat channel that the university uses, but we don't really tie that to Elon Day so much. Uh, direct mail, yeah, we send stuff out in advance. Uh, for a few years, we were sending out um, kind of a very simple uh, keepsake uh, that was either a magnet or um, the one year that we did it at College Coffee, we actually sent a postcard. I wish I had held one up, but a postcard that was in the shape. Actually, the next slide might show a sample of what it, what it was, but it was a coffee sleeve that you could cut out of the cardboard that you were mailed. And then the past couple of years, we were um, smart about it where the postcard that we sent on one side said, we are Elon, and that's what they held up. Um, and on the other side, it talked about Elon Day and how to be involved, but it was a lot of people used that. Uh, one year we sent a fold out thing, it was a bigger poster, it was a little too um, folded to, to make a clear picture. Great. So are we, obviously time is getting a bit tight, so what I'm going to do is ask a couple of the bigger questions that have come up. Okay. Um, and, then, and then at the end, I've, I've got a few smaller questions about budgets and gifts that I might be able to get to. Um, so for the bigger questions, um, how has Elon Day impacted your overall fundraising efforts? Uh, for example, do major donors still give with the same frequency? Oh, yeah. yeah, for the most part our major, major giving efforts have not changed at all. In fact, um, we leverage Elon Day to help uh, secure some of the big gifts that we received this past year, a couple of $250,000 matches if we hit thresholds or converted because we used them as uh, matches as part of Elon Day that weren't coming through and the giving officer was able to go to them and say, hey, we want you to do this. So we actually have found that it's actually leveraged more gifts. Um, one of the negatives that we have is many uh, alums, mostly our young alums, are saying, no, I'm gonna wait. So if you're a, a fundraiser, you really wanna lock in as many gifts in the beginning of the academic year and then do the chase at the end. We have people now saying, I'm gonna wait, I wanna see what the matches are gonna be this year. You know, And uh, one strategic thing that, that I've done, and everybody wants me to change it, but we've done always a, a two for one. So like you double the impact of your gift, but we've never done like three to one and four to one and five to one as part of Elon Day because then people will wait for that. They're like, oh my gosh, you're gonna, you're gonna make a five to one match? I gotta wait for that. But if it's just dollar for dollar and we know that that's what we're doing, um, that's what we try to hold to. Uh, one of the things, we're trying to not over incentivize people waiting to the end of Elon Day because then we think we'll, we'll be like at 2.30 trying to set the goal and we'll have no idea. Why is everyone waiting? It's last year we made it so happy uh, at the end. And, uh, and so that's what we're, we're, we try to do. Uh, overall, uh, we've seen our, our giving increase exponentially, and we're more likely to retain these donors because of Elon Day uh, than if we weren't. Um, and there's all kinds of stats I could get into about how we've seen that uh, repeat. Parents are a little bit of a nuance. You know, if they graduate with their alums, then maybe not as likely. And so we've got to tap the new wave of parents. We pretty much have parents for four-year cycles, and so it's just keeping them in the wave. And more freshman parents give than senior parents. Maybe we could look at pulling out some of those stats and say a blog post at some point because they sound really good. Okay. Yeah. Great. So a uh, question from uh, Ruth Roy Elms College is what have been your biggest hurdles now and and what were the growing pains basically? Yeah, the, the, we had many, many, many growing pains but um, uh, and, and I'll surface over some of these, I apologize, but um, buy-in in, in the first year was tough. You know, I wanted a giving day and I couldn't get buy-in for that, so I created more of a pride day with our team and um, and then just kind of evolved it the next year to be more of a giving day focused on giving. But people didn't really have an appetite for it in the very beginning. They needed to see the success of it. And when they saw a slight success, they were like, oh, maybe we should do this. So that was a hurdle in the beginning. Um, the other thing is uh, Elon Day is now a time-consuming thing. Uh, I've got the communication staff, the technology staff, the, uh, they are planning for Elon Day. They, they budget time into their schedules for the year. If we didn't have support across the university, that, that would be really difficult. Um, I think that uh, if other vice presidents were anti-Elon Day, but because it leverages so much for the institution, marketing, publicity, everyone wins from it, uh, I think we've got the, the buy-in now um, that happens. 
I do think budget can be a challenge for people. What, what we do is a really collaborative approach. So again, I said, these are things that they're already spending money on. Let's just say it's part of Elon Day. Um, so if you can take advantage of uh, resources that already exist, uh, we, we have difficulty getting brand new resources. You know, We want to send a t-shirt to everybody that uh, participates in Elon Day. Well, that is a big ticket item. And then you got to do a tax benefit for it and those kinds of things. And so it's a great idea. We don't have the budget for it, so we make some other creative idea happen. You've walked perfectly into the Deirdre Swords question. <laughs> how do you set your budget on Elon Day, for Elon Day? Yeah, so this is also going to terrify you all. We don't have a budget. Um, I literally don't have a budget for Elon Day. Uh, I have a budget for alumni engagement, and they do their chapter events that they were already going to do, but they make them for Elon Day. I've got an annual giving budget that did a direct mail marketing piece in the spring. Now it's an Elon Day marketing piece. Um, Again, that's not my budget. That's annual giving's budget, alumni engagement's budget. Um, the magazine of Elon is part of the university communications budget. They do a big spread on Elon. Day. That's already part of their budget. You know, so we just take advantage of all these other things. Um, the college coffee budget uh, that, that does that, that's already budgeted. So we really, we, we come up with a few key ideas and then we just tweak and try to steal money from other places. But Literally, in the budget at Elon University, there is no budget for Elon. Sorry. <laughs> a good answer. It's an interesting <laughs> one. Yeah, right. Everyone's like, I don't believe you. I wish there was a budget for Elon. Day, so the, these next questions, John, uh, they're some of the, the kind of um, maybe more technical questions. If I could maybe limit you to max 30 seconds, even shorter, if you could, just so we can get through a few of them, that would be great. Yeah, the, the fire round, right? Rapid so, fire. <laughs> So, do you count all the gifts that come in on the day, regardless of the channel? Yes. We count every single gift. And, and uh, a little secret is, we will even count gifts that come in before that day, not much before. So, if we ask all of our volunteers that are going to be champions for that day to have made their gift, uh, we say, do that um, the day before so we can count you and be ready to when we're announcing the, the thing. So it's not a exact pure 12 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, it's in some cases uh, a few hours before that. And, but it's not a week long of counting. Um, it doesn't. Great. OK. So um, these are going to jump around a bit. But do you have a separate giving form for the giving day, or do you just use your general giving form? Uh, we adapt our website so that it's really about Elon Day. It's much more a quick transactional. Um, we try to uh, make those a little bit more user friendly. But for the most part, people give through whatever channel they can. The mobile giving site on that day is the same mobile giving site we give. We just brand it differently. We we make it be it's Elon Day, you know, so you don't forget. But uh, there's nobody that forgets it's Elon Day now. Right, and here's here's a good one from Angela. Have you live streamed during the day? Yes, uh, and it's a little controversial because live streaming does not get the audience that people think it should. But you know, we have about 150 to 200 people that are watching live stream college coffee announcements. And then when we do live stream later in the day at one of the parties, uh, we try not to uh, live stream our, our events around the world, um, especially when they're at a bar or something. It could get a little uh, out of control. No, just we, that's not the image that, that we're looking to do, but uh, we do live stream. The controversy is it's, it's, it's a good amount of work for 200 people, but we, we like to say we're broadcasting around the world. And so, um, and for people that can't be there, we want them to hear about the announcements. The bigger thing we do is we capture it on video. We take that clip and we put it on our website. So then anyone can watch the most important thing any time of the day, and then we push that out through emails as well. Fantastic. So there's a lot of gifts. There's a lot of new data. How do the gift processing team handle it? Uh, we literally uh, task people that aren't responsible for gift processing to do gift processing on that day, and they work for um, until midnight that night. They're, they're cranking gifts out throughout the day. We try to do them in batches um, as quick as we can, and we've got about uh, 10 people now processing gifts in different ways. Um, and then we, we've gotten smarter so that we even have the stewardship pieces go out afterwards in about a day, I mean, in a, in, within a week. And um, that used to take forever. If you, if you can imagine, you're processing um, 
2,703 gifts, that's a lot of, so we've gotten it streamlined now, but in the beginning as we were having successes, it was, um, it took a lot. I, what was this past year, 4,600 gifts, you know? So um, it, it takes a lot of time, but we've got a great team. Yeah, I wonder if it might scare you, something that we've seen successful is, we sometimes let the student callers who are doing a phone-a-thon put the gifts directly onto the platform on the day. Yeah, oh, and, and I apologize. Um, we're not dealing with a lot of mail that day. Uh, this is all online gifts, so the data is already in there. It's just a matter of, a, you know, if Duncan's real name is Paul, someone's got to look that up and see. Oh, Duncan's really Paul. We got to associate. So we're trying to put it into Razor's Edge, our the platform we use. And so, yeah, it's a good idea. But these are all electronic gifts for the most part coming in. Great. So I've got two questions left. So I think we're actually going to get through them all, unless no. <laughs> Yeah. Unless you guys want to ask any any final ones, but um, uh, so who are the key decision makers? Uh, that leadership team, um, and when it's a really big decision like the color of the postcard, no, I'm just kidding. Um, it's the leadership team. I, I'm really driving that. Whoever the lead is on your university or college needs to be the one that can kind of either get the answer quickly from somebody, um, quote unquote, higher up, or can make the decision. Um, and in a lot of cases, I'm not making the decision. I'm reaching a consensus with the decision makers. I can't decide to do a new website, but I can get the right people in the room to decide. We need a new website. Great. Okay. So final question. You have about a minute. Does Elon Pay do any other P2P, uh, uh, peer to peer, or crowdfunding initiatives outside of Elon Pay? Uh, we've gotten more into it. We, we do a lot of peer to peer. We don't use this kind of um, uh, website marketing campaign. Uh, this year, we started a model where we're doing a kind of a, a reunion giving day. And it's, it's having some success. I think it's because it feels so isolated from this overall big deal uh, day that it's not, it's almost hurting it that we do this big time uh, Elon day. Uh, crowdfunding has mixed results for us um, in different ways because if we encourage very specialized projects, we're saying don't give to what you care most about. We're just saying this is the thing that everyone cares most about. And so we're We've really allowed people to designate their gifts to where they care most about, and we've seen that exponentially increase over the years. Great. We've answered all the questions. How about nice. that? Success. Well done. Well done, John. Thank you for a wonderful show. We've had a, some lovely comments up here from people saying thank you already. Um, and so thank you all for coming. You will get the, you will get the recording. Uh, you've got a handout there, and we'll send it all over. If you have any questions, events at above.net, and we will answer quickly. Uh, another fantastic info. Thank you from Meredith, John. So there we go. So thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you. Let's do this again soon. All right. Thanks so much, Duncan. Bye now.